Our guest this week is Professor Lal Zod. He is a commentator and analyst on Afghanistan. We'll discuss the situation in Afghanistan today, the role of the international powers, and the way forward for Afghanistan in the future. Professor Lal Zod was born in Afghanistan and obtained his Bachelor of Science degree from Kabul University before studying for his master's degree in the former Soviet Union. He then worked as a professor of engineering at Kabul University for more than 20 years. He was, however, imprisoned by Hezbi Islami due to his political views and held prisoner for several months. He was subsequently imprisoned by the Taliban regime while working for the International Committee of the Red Cross. And after his release, had to flee Afghanistan to the United Kingdom in 1998. In Britain, he taught at London South Bank University and subsequently became a doctor in engineering in 2006. He has actively participated in political activities against the Taliban regime, writing articles and participating in conferences, seminars and TV interviews. He has translated and published several articles and books about the history and politics of Afghanistan. And he is a strong critic of Kabul, of first the Karzai and then the Ghani regime, and indeed of American policies in Afghanistan. Welcome back to the English Hour on ANN Satellite Television. It's good to be here, good to have you with us. And our guest today is Professor Lal Zod uh, from Afghanistan. And we're going to talk about Afghanistan. We're going to talk about three issues. And thank you, sir, for being with us. We will talk about the current situation. We will talk about the role of the international powers in Afghanistan. And we'll talk about the way forward. And uh, so first, Afghanistan today. The government in Afghanistan, instead of bringing peace, stability and reconstruction to Afghanistan, has been drowned day by day in extensive corruption, tribalism, and has watched the spread of war all over the country. Currently, Afghanistan's power is shared between Ashraf Ghani, the president, and a chief executive, Abdullah Abdullah. This division of power has, if anything, increased Afghanistan's instability. So, Professor Lalzad, the, the, the situation in Afghanistan today, I mean, as I see it, it it's, it's confused because you have... a. I mean, forgive me for stating the obvious, but for the sake of, for my sake as, as an outsider, you have uh, President Ashraf Ghani and you have a chief executive, which is a curious idea, Abdullah Abdullah, and they seem to be in power sharing mode, but Ashraf Ghani in the lead and Abdullah Abdullah in kind of second position. Is anything getting done? Is it, is it successful, this setup? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you here. Oh, bless you. Uh, let me start the current situation of Afghanistan, but, uh, but by what has been defined uh, by Washington Times on 5th of May. Okay. Let me 10 days ago. Our Afghan puppet regime is corrupt, inept, tribal, sectarian, brutal, and unpopular. Good mm -hmm. soldiers fill armed forces, opium production is soaring, election year more by massive fraud plus poverty unemployment and young are leaving the country and what is going on mm. in taliban is spring spreading everywhere mm. this what is the present situation but as uh, you ask about the power sharing government it has been done by john kerry mm. but practically has not been employed because uh, because all the power has been centered uh, by Ashraf Ghani 
in Arg or in the palace. And Abdullah is just sitting over there receiving some foreign gas and going to some meetings. That's it. Mm. And practically, there is nothing being improved and the situation is getting worse day by day. But Ashraf Ghani was seen as the great hope for Afghanistan. I mean, <clears throat> people viewed him as a, a wise man coming in. You, you, you think he... Is this his fault? Uh, is it any one man's fault, the failure of, of, of Afghanistan today? Actually, this is not the one main fault uh, what is going on in Afghanistan. It is the uh, government structure fault. Because what uh, Afghans, and especially Americans, uh, represent, representative Khalil Zad, uh, forced on Afghans a very highly centralized government. All the power has been given to president and he is acting like a king during um, mm -hmm. Karzai and now also by Ashraf Ghani. He has all the power. Now no minister, even governor, they have an authority to appoint a single person. So he is appointing everybody. He is um, firing anybody he likes. He is... Uh, um, giving uh, ranks to anybody he likes. So this is the, the result of the structure in the policies which has been wrongly imp implemented or imposed on Afghanistan. Otherwise, one main fault is not very good. If there is, of course, a proper person, then he can do much better. But as much as I know from uh, uh, Ghani, he was uh, in academic for some times, and he has uh, written several articles, but from all what I know, he was a very dictator at the beginning, and he had very tribalistic uh, views regarding uh, Afghanistan um, people, and especially ethnic composition. And uh, before even the, it, the, he became a president, he had several interviews. He was telling that, is it right that we have all the, the speakers of one ethnicity in prison? Is it equil equilibrium or right to that the Americans are bombarding only South. So mm. it means that if I become president, I will equalize everything. Now he has done this practically. It means that now the war is spreading all over the country, and that is uh, the result of his uh, ideology and his uh, thinking. So his ideology being, I mean, you're implying he is, um, he is harsher on the, on, the, on the South, on the Pashto, or? Unfortunately, the main problem in Afghanistan is the ethnic problem internally, or ethnic tension, because Afghanistan is composed mainly of four ethnics, Tajik, Hazara, Uzbek, and Pashtun. Since for the last uh, 200 years, Pashtun ruled the country, and they were claiming that they are the, in majority, even though there is no census, no, no statistic, and, and as much as I know, no ethnicity composition in Afghanistan is more than 30%. Mm. By, by, but they are claiming that since we are in majority, we should rule the country, we should have all the power. And also, since they are uh, telling that we are in majority, we have created the country, we don't recognize the borderline or the border with Pakistan, and half of Pakistan belonging to us. So we, we want to establish a great uh, Afghanistan or Louis Afghanistan. And th this is the second reason why on Pakistan are interfering in Afghanistan affairs. Because if somebody is claiming that your house, half of your house belongs to me, of course you will, you will not stay calm. You will not uh, let him to, to stand on his foot and then attack on you. And yet I've met uh, Pashtos from, from Pakistan who insist on calling themselves Afghan. I mean, you, you meet these people. So, I mean, there is a, there is to a degree, there is a, um, the, the a cross-border nature to society there, isn't there? I mean, is that not the case? Historically, Afghans and Pashtuns are the same. Hmm. Originally, they have been called Afghans, but uh, in the last uh, about less than 100 years, or maybe a little bit more, they have been con called themselves uh, Pashtuns. Actually, others calling them Afghan, and they themselves calling uh, them are uh, Pashtuns. So Afghans and Pashtuns are the same. What is uh, bad in Afghanistan or good in Afghanistan? These ethnics which are living in Afghanistan, the majority are outside the country. 
It means that the number of Pashtuns in Afghans are much less than the number of Pashtuns or Afghans living in Pakistan. In Afghanistan, maybe around uh, seven, eight million, but in Pakistan, there are about 30, 40 million Pashtuns. Yeah. Or they yeah. call them Afghans. Yeah. The same thing with Tajiks. The majority is in Tajikistan, Uzbek. The majority is in Uzbekistan. In Hazara, actually, they, they are um, the Shia population, with which the majority is living in Iran. So this is the composition of our country, and this is the main reason that even though that the Pakistani um, Afghans or Pashtuns, they don't like the, the tribal um, views of Kabul government because they are kick, uh, telling that you should uh, uh, join us, and they are telling that you are the, mon the minority, why not you come to us? Hmm. So if this is the case that, that the majority is very important, you should join us, rather joining us to you. So these are the main problems. Mm, interesting. And now we have a resurgent Taliban who are taking advantage of the, the fact that we have a centralized government and the fact that the Western powers are less engaged. I mean, um, the, the Taliban, uh, you have fought, or at least spoken strongly against the Taliban. I mean, you were imprisoned yourself at one time. Uh, you are feel they are not the answer, and yet they're going to be part of the political future of Afghanistan, are they not, inevitably? So the main reason is the, <coughs> uh, who are Taliban, who created Taliban, and for what purpose? Taliban was created in 1994 by Pakistani ISI hmm. in order to prevent the, uh, to, for establishing a strong government in Kabul. So Pakistan doesn't have any idea, anything. They, these are the, the, those um, madrasa students trained in thousands of Pakistani madrasas or, or uh, religious schools in Pakistan and have been trained over there, equipped and sent to Afghanistan to, to, to fight Karzai regime. Because Karzai, when he was in power, he, he was thinking that since Americans are here, Americans allies are here, now we can force Pakistan. I, I do not recognize the border and then I can become a very strong country. So we can go further. Mm -hmm. And Pakistan knew this. And Pakistan actually prevented all these policies. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Americans knew and all their allies knew that where the Taliban are coming, who, was, who are supplying them? Logistic, money, equipment, arms, all this stuff. We know in, in present situation, uh, the religion, religious men can fight a government, not to Americans. Mm. It's crystal clear. But Pakistan cannot, uh, United States cannot force Pakistan to prevent them. Because they, they, are, they know that what is going on in Afghanistan. And Karzai clearly uh, was, uh, they, were, uh, they were telling that we don't recognize the border. Yes, I mean, but the, nonetheless, if you have a resurgent Taliban, as you clearly do, that must be because they are, to some degree, popular with the ordinary people, at least in the areas in which they are coming up again. Wouldn't that be the case? Because the Taliban are Pashtun, and they, 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 they were going to and working from the areas, they are also Pashtuns. So they have their background, ethnic background, and also religious background. We are t we, they are telling that Karzai is uh, in uh, uh, is uh, infidel because Americans are here, Westerns are here, and we are Muslims. So two main reasons. First, ethnic background and then religious background. They are the, the supporting base for Taliban. So mm. that is that the reason. They, they, they have their support over there in, in those areas. Mm. But politically, they has been seen to northern part of Afghanistan. Because Tajiks are not supporting Taliban, Uzbeks are not, not supporting Taliban. There is no Hazara Talib at, at all in the in whole Afghanistan. They are anti-Taliban anti forces. Actually, they helped Americans to topple the Taliban. But after, but after that, by Khalilzad policy, they have, has been sidelined. And you know what happened in, in Bun? Karzai had two votes, and Satar Sirat had 11 votes. 
but they forced Karzai because of the ethnicity, because, mm -hmm. because um, Pashtuns are the majority, Karzai, a Pashtun should be the, the ruler of Afghanistan. That was the base. No, oh, it's also because of his connection with America, I presume, was another factor. So that yeah. is, there mm -hmm. also, uh, Sirat was also, um, uh, mm -hmm. had a connection with West. Mm -hmm. He was living in Italy, he, he was a supporter of for, former king, and there were a lot of, uh, uh, people uh, living in the uh, yes. um, but they were not Pashtuns. So yeah. when you are based thing, um, actually uh, thinking that something that it should be based on ethnicity, then what is the, the qualification, the merits, how do you want to mm. then the bring democracy and all this stuff to a country? Mm. So now they are counting in our national army, the, uh, the Pashtuns should be 45 percent, Tajik should be something about 30 uh, percent. So everything is based on, on this calculation in these wrong statistics. So Minister should be based on this. Uh, the parliament is based on mm. this. Everything mm. is based on ethnicity. So can we build democracy, state, or nation based on these things? Mm. Never, never. And corruption, you say, I mean, the, the present president has made a campaign against corruption, hasn't he? Trying to bring it in and stop it. Yeah, verbally he is uh, telling that, but mm. practically, still you are the most corrupt world on the top of the list. Mm. Ashraf Ghani is now three years in power. What he has banned? The corruption is, corruption is spread all over the country, but who is the corrupt person? Mm. There is nobody corrupt in, in our country. Mm. There was massive election fraud, but, mm. it, but nobody is responsible. Yes, yes. You're That's fighting true. about corruption, not about the corrupt people. Yes, yes. You're fighting, uh, telling about the fraud, but nobody is, who is responsible? Mm. He is also blaming others. No, you shouldn't blame, you're responsible. You have to mm. take action. Who, who is doing all this corruption? Who is uh, spreading uh, narcotic? Mm, well, presumably, they are Afghan uh, warlords and Afghan individuals. I mean, it is, it is an Afghan problem, isn't it, this corruption? But uh, the heads are in government, the heads are in parliament. Mm. If they don't have this connection, why they have not been captured? Mm. Why during 15 years they have not been detained a single mm. person? Mm. Everybody yeah. is blaming each other. If you go to Afghanistan, Afghans blaming Americans that they imposed everything, they forced everything, they brought Ghani, they brought Karzai, they, uh, every, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you ask Americans or British people, they'll say, this is your country. Afghans have provided this condition. Yes. You, you are the corrupt people, you are do, doing all this for us. So now nobody knows who is responsible in our country. Mm -hmm. It's very distressing. But the, and things are getting worse in your, uh, as you perceive them. I mean, uh, certainly we see and hear news reports about more violence in uh, Kabul and so on. You feel things are getting worse? Every week there is a, an explosion, there is a suicide, there, there, mm. there, there is attack on hospitals, there is a, a attack on military bases, districts are falling, Taliban are growing, gaining ground, and uh, government is losing. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the present condition. The government is, uh, mm -hmm. plus uh, American blaming now Russia, blaming Iran, and uh, that uh, they are helping Taliban. But you know, officially, so far, Americans, they didn't recognize Taliban as a terrorist. Mm -hmm. they really? Rec they yeah, they no, recognize no, Al-Qaeda as, as terrorists, Daesh as terrorists, but Taliban not. Yes. Because Karzai was telling that, no, who are mm -hmm. more dangerous? This Northern Alliance, Tajik, Uzbekin, Hazar are more dangerous than Taliban because Taliban are Pashtun, Taliban are, uh, is my brothers. Interesting. They released them from, from, from prison. Even now, mm. yes, he yes, brought, he yes. brought Hikmat here because he is, he is Pashtun. Mm. And he has sidelined his first vice president, General Dostum, because he is in Uzbek. <laughs> he, he fired Ahmad Ziyah Masood because he is a Tajik. So we are, we are day by day drowning, sinking in a, a swamp. Well, now let's, it's, it's up to uh, um, President Donald Trump well, what, let's, what he wants to do. Let's talk about exactly that issue. We'll move on because we must.
to the second of our topics for discussion, the role of the international powers and indeed of President Donald Trump. Fifteen years on since the Washington administration started to work in Afghanistan and for Afghanistan, thousands of lives and billions of US dollars have been spent. However, the key objective in Afghanistan, the objective of creating a stable nation, has failed. The current US President, Donald Trump, now has to rethink and revise his strategies in Afghanistan and look at why policies thus far have failed to produce a more stable nation, imposing instead an authoritarian government with apparently wrong-headed policies. So, Donald Trump, well, but before we get to the Donald Trump issue and the role of America, there are many people that talk of the Afghan situation as partly the product of two lesser powers, a conflict between Pakistan and India, which is also being fought out in Afghanistan. Is that true? Do these two nations also... Yeah, that is the, uh, another main question, that what is going on in Afghanistan? Mm. As you know, there, there is a great trouble between India and Pakistan over Kashmir. Yes. And yes. India is the supporter of Karzai and uh, Ashraf Ghani. And he has uh, many offices in the uh, southern part of Afghanistan, in provinces. Mm. And actually, they are interfering in uh, Pakistani, anti-Pakistani forces, especially in Balochistan. In Pakistan, is have uh, several times um, told this in that uh, the Indians are interfering in Afghanistan. And actually, this part of uh, the story of borderline mm -hmm. is also this was supported by Russians and also by Indians that to disintegrate Pakistan. So that that is another um, thing that the Pakistan means that if you do not stop the interference of uh, India or the rule of India which are based in Afghanistan, interfering in Pakistan, mm -hmm. of course, this problem will continue. That is the other main issue or uh, reason that uh, Pakistans are sending uh, or supporting Taliban to fight mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. Yeah. And we need, and we're talking about the role of the international powers, um, there is a mood now to send more troops to Afghanistan. We've seen this with Donald Trump. There, is, there have been requests to the British to send more. Not the British will send many more, but it's talked of. Do you see this um, international forces coming back? Is that constructive or? Uh, <coughs> Donald Trump has three choices. Either leave Afghanistan, withdraw, then let the Pakistan, India and regional powers do whatever they want to mm. do. The second option, continue with present situation. It means that there are a small number of forces just to uh, keep the center of provinces, center of districts. All the villages are under the control of Taliban, what is interesting. In the third option, what needs uh, Donald Trump? Change of policy in Afghanistan. Because if you are sending more troops, more money, with this current gov uh, corrupt government, everything will be the same as what is going on now. Yes. Because absolutely. what happened before, when Americans came to Afghanistan, they brought lots of soldiers, lots of money. And since Afghans, for rehabilitation, for um, uh, military purposes, support of armed forces, all this stuff, without any accountability. So what Afghans did with them? They become corrupt. They were, they were expert in corruption. They made all these Americans also corrupt. Mm. What mm. is that? now the figures given by Americans? How the rules has been constructed? How the factories, no, 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 no factories, no, no infrastructure in Afghanistan, but billions of dollars have been spent. You know, we have ghost schools. Now mm. we have ghost army, mm. ghost forces, you know? Yes, we've seen this in so many countries. It happened in Iraq so as well. This is if you are putting yeah. more money Yes. What, and they are not accountable to anybody. Mm. Mm. In the prison, especially the prison government with Ashraf Ghani, 
with this corrupt government, with this corrupt forces, and even the, you know that the Taliban or Pashtun, they are fighting Ashraf Ghani, who are supporting practically the Ashraf Ghani. All these soldiers, they are fighting Taliban because they are receiving 300 US dollar per month. From the government? From government. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So why they should fight for that? And they know that all their commanders or most of their commanders are Pashtun from th those ethnics. Mm -hmm. And when they capture Taliban, and after that, Ghani will release them. And we have several cases of these suicide bombers that, that these people were uh, um, former prisoners in, in Kabul and also in Bagram. Yes, so yes. so you, by sending more troops and uh, more money, to present government, it means that you are doing the same thing. And the second reason, whom they are fighting and where, the Taliban in villages of Afghanistan, mm. where these Taliban are coming from? Do Western power or America have that much, do, uh, that much soldiers to send every village of Afghanistan? No, no. Of course not. So because the, the army is not fighting, the police is not fighting because they, they knew that. Now they, they are also the, the selling the weapons, selling the ammunition to Taliban, hmm. giving provinces to Taliban, districts to Taliban. Hmm. You know that Kunduz has been given to Taliban two times? Hmm. The big province in the north, who are supporting them? Hmm. Several districts are also falling every week to, to Taliban forces. And then the, the, the government attacks, they, they, they destroy those tongues and those things which were taken from government. So we, we, we are, now we, we, we have uh, uh, been achieved all the, what we were want. We defeated Taliban. Hmm. Which Taliban? Hmm. How long you are defeating Taliban if they are coming from Pakistan? So if Why you are not <coughs> taking consideration of who where the factory is, where the main source is. They are training and equipped in, in over there. There are thousands of madras in this in WFP Northeast Fro in frontier areas. All of them are Pashtun. So They're not under the control of even Pakistan. So if this is what's wrong with the country um, and the international powers are only interfering in a negative sense, and you clearly don't particularly want that to continue. Um, what should they be? How should they be interfering? They should be... As I told you, there are two minutes. First of all, we have to concentrate on the regime of Kabul, on the government of Kabul. We have to change this government. We have to change this system. We have to decentralize the system. Yes, yes. Otherwise, yes. you are just continuing what is going on. My... P what I propose is... We have to establish a temporary government. They should change the constitution to provide a decentralized government, federal type government that the local people, the people, they should actually elect what they like. Their governors, their mayors, their police chiefs. If, if any province, if any village, he wants to, to his government to be a Talib, why not? So, we should provide this condition. It means we are imposing. Now, what is going in Afghanistan? Ashraf Ghani is sending a, a Taj, all these Tajiks or Uzbeks in Hazara to fight in Hilmand, in Paktio, in, in Ningarhar. And now the, the, the northern province, there are no, nobody to, to over there to, to fight Taliban. Mm. So, so this is a situation in which there are three international actors, none of whom are really helping, Pakistan, India, and the United States? Actually, there are three things in my There is a, a triangle of uh, rulers or actors. Yeah. First, Kabul government. Then, all these international allies. And the second, regional allies of Pakistan. Pakistan, it means India with Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Pakistan with all the Arabian countries, where they provide the logistics and money because they want their fighters to be over there, not coming to Saudi Arabia or over there. There should be a, a ground, uh, a playground for them, that is, which is Afghanistan. 
So, we have this triangle. The first important thing is Afghanistan government. We have to change it. We have to decentralize it. We let the people to elect their leaders by their qualification in merits, not based on ethnicity, not, not based on language. And then stop India's support of Kabul government to interfere in Pakistan internal affairs. Then we can force Pakistan why they are training and providing. Mm. You know, where are the Taliban leaders? Americans, they, do they, do, they don't know? Mm. They know. British, they don't know where are the Taliban leaders? They're in Pakistan, you're suggesting? Not suggesting everybody is crystal clear to, to everybody. Where is mm. the Hakkari committee? Where are all these leaders? Yeah. Where are they coming from? Who, who is providing? So we, we, where was Al Qaeda uh, killed in Aibatabu? Where was Mullah Omar? All these leaders are over there. And what about the other lesser powers? China, for instance, is exploiting minerals from Afghanistan, from the northern. But that's irrelevant, is it? Or you know, when there, when there is a cause in the prison in Afghanistan, so mafia is work, mafia of power is working over there. Smugglers are working over it. Now, what is a business over there? Everybody is taking part in uh, what, what they want to do. You know what, uh, what is interesting in Afghanistan, we, we are talking uh, between us, what, had been, what type of democracy has been created in Afghanistan? This is a new type of Afghan democracy. Mm -hmm. It means that the people have the right to say anything against government, criticize anybody. And the government can do anything they want. Nobody prevent. Mm. So everybody is free to see anything, and the government is also free to do anything. Corruption, fraud, and nobody is responsible. And would you say it's got worse, corruption and fraud? Of course. When there is more money, mm. more corruption. When there is no accountability, we, we, we is, uh, nobody is asking uh, what you are doing. And uh, of course there will be more corruption. And meanwhile, underlying this, there are so many other problems. The, the heroin uh, crop is uh, increasing, and I mean, or at least the po opium poppy crop is in increasing, um, the, um, with its consequences for the West. That, again, is a shortcoming of the Karzai government, or can you... And, and then subsequently of the Ashraf Ghani government, or is it... Uh... Both of them. Uh, Ghani is the continuation of Karzai. Mm -hmm. Both have the same ideology, belong to the same ethnic, and they are actually supporting tri tribalism. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you... They're supporting uh, tribalism. Yeah, exactly. But is tribalism the way forward? Because we want more grassroots governance, don't we? And no, that is different. Uh -huh. That federal style is different. Tribalism based on what ethnic? As I told you, this is Pashtun tribalism. This mm. is Afghan tribalism. It means that they are just letting the Taliban to grow. Yeah. Because as you may know that now even Americans have written all these uh, books, this, this stuff that um, Karzai was telling that Taliban is um, not danger to me because mm. they belong to me. Mm. But these warlords, are, which are Tajik, Uzbek, they, they are more dangerous. They have sidelined uh, side uh, Ismail Khan, General Dostum, Ahmad Zia, all, the, all these. How, how many uh, commanders of Tajik had been killed during Karzai? Even President Rabbani was assassinated. So many famous anti-Taliban were assassinated mm. during Karzai. Because, because they were anti-Taliban. Yes. Even now, you know the General Dostum. He was vice president. He went to Faryab to fight Taliban. What happened to him? Where is he? There was plan to assassinate him by, by the Ashraf Ghani and um, Atmar. Hmm. He's the security advisor of uh, Ghani and he's controlling everything in Afghanistan. Even he wanted to go to Kunduz, they didn't let him. Hmm. So, so it, means that they, it means that they actually they are not fighting Taliban. They are spreading the Taliban. And, they, and even now in Afghanistan, there, there, there are rumors that no, Americans, uh, they want them to go to North Afghanistan, then they want to send them to Central Asia to fight Russia. So 
these things, c c conspiracy theories are spreading now all over. Of course they are. But, um, but what would you like now in, in from President Donald Trump? Donald Trump is the main actor in Afghanistan? Exactly, exactly. Because uh, he is supporting, he is providing all the money in support of our armed forces. We have more, uh, the officially 350,000 soldiers. Mm. All of the money is given by Americans. Billions of dollars. Even government employees are receiving all the, their uh, salaries for, for, for We have no resources. We have nothing. Just custom, nothing else. Mm. Don't have any production. We don't have any export. So yes. things, things are coming from, from, from the abroad. So they can, that, that, that is my station. What they want, they want peace and stabilization in Afghanistan or they want to continue. According to conspiracy theories, they have, uh, it means that Americans are supporting Taliban, supporting Al-Qaeda. This is what said in Afghanistan, mm. in, uh, between yes, Afghans. Yes, yes. They, 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 are, um, they have created Daesh, they have created Taliban, they have created um, um, Al-Qaeda to, to go to Central Asia to fight Russians. Mm. Because they're asking, if, if it is not the case, why not they are not eliminating Taliban? Why not they are eliminating, eliminating Qaeda? Why supporting government? Because they are releasing Taliban. Hmm. So, so now it depends to Americans what they want, especially Donald Trump. Want to stop all this stuff or want to continue? If he wants to stop it, first of all, he has to change the Kabul government. Created, provide a condition. But can we? we? I mean, we've got now these people are elected. Um, they're serving their term. There's, it's hard to change the government. And he was not elected. There was a, a fraud election. Well, we have a yes, national united government, unity government, not an elected president, but officially there's an elected government. It is a shame for us and also for all Western countries. There was. How it was elected? Then where is Abdullah coming from? What he is doing over there? What is this post of uh, executive? Mm. Yeah. The, it means it was something that to provide uh, to prevent war. Otherwise, Abdullah was the president. He had the majority of the votes. Mm. You know, in in in, um, in South provinces, in Paktio, in Khost, in um, uh, Paktiko. The total population is known more than 100,000, but the number of voters wa was more than 200,000. Yes, yes. So based on this kind of uh, <coughs> voting, yes. or then Ghani was on the top of the list, and Abdullah didn't accept it. The people didn't accept it. They wanted to, uh, to announce their government. So there was, they must start fighting. So John Kerry went to Vardyar. So you, would, you must be president, you must be executive, then you have to divide the power 50-50. Now Abdullah has no power. And, and it was agreed that within two years, the, the lawyer jerga should be called, and the election should be held, the constitution should be changed, and we should have a, 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 a prime minister post in Afghanistan. Now it is mm. two year. And still nothing. Still nothing. Yeah. So this is the condition. Yeah. So which kind of presi elected yeah. president? After I told you that we are telling them that Afghans are uh, should be blamed because they elected. But the Afghans say, sorry, we have not elected anybody. You imposed Ghani and Abdullah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is the reality. That is where the, the conspiracy theory is starting. Mm -hmm. You imposed it. You forced us in constitution. Nobody agreed to have a centralized government, but Khalzad imposed it. Because the people wanted King Zahir Shah. Yeah, yes, yes, of course, in the beginning. Yes, indeed. An interesting moment, wasn't there? In, the, in Bonn, Sirat had 11 yeah, votes. Yeah. So now, it means, you know that now what is what we in Afghans, uh, Afghanistan are thinking, that you've done everything. You mm. not, Still, you are supporting them. Well, I suppose it may be true to a point. But in yeah. here, in, the, in London, in Washington, we said, no, Afghan elected. Uh, Mm -hmm. Ghani, Afghan elected Karzai. No, that was not the case. That that is not the case. Well, well, that's really we well we better move on and deal with our therefore with our third subject for discussion, 
the way forward for Afghanistan. After years of instability, there is a need for a new way forward for Afghanistan, a way forward that deals with the current problems of a resurgent Taliban, a way forward that enables some form of governance that is perceived as not being corrupt, as not being in any way a puppet regime, but instead is actually a genuine Afghan government with power to the people, with power for the regions, with power for the disempowered who are so angry and so frustrated and who are today resorting to violence. So, Professor Lazo, the, the way forward, we're looking for a way forward. Does this mean, um, I mean, you're suggesting new elections, but is there not a need for some sort of loyal jerga situation where you now you somehow give power back to the provinces is, is or do we want a western style election again it's so easily corrupted uh, we cannot have any election as uh, if we have it it will be like before what what is our lesson from 15 years past 15 years we have several elections three president election in parliamentary mm. election we need a uh, first of all a temporary government or pressing Ashraf Ghani to hold the Luya Jirga. Mm. First of all, they should change the constitution. If we do not change the constitution, it means we are going the same circle. In what way does the constitution need changing? Sorry? In which way? By, by Luya Jirga. The Luya Jirga has the power to change, the, to amend the constitution. It is and, based on this constitution, right. the only um, organ that uh, has the right of changing the constitution is Aluya Jirga. So, and to change the constitution to do to do what to the constitution? First of all, because we have to decentralize the system based on something legal. It mm. means based on constitution. According to present constitution, we have a president, nothing else. Every po all the power is uh, centered mm, in hands. president's hand. Yeah. So for election, if we go to another election, the same thing. Uh, Karzai had all, all the power for two terms. It was elected based on money, in corruption, in fraud. Now Ghani elected or selected somehow based on that corruption. If there is any election, we say that there is no security. Mm, all yes, the villages are sure. under the uh, control of Taliban. Yeah. Where do you want to have the election? How? Who will come to vote? Mm. And to who? Who has the, the power to stand against Ghani, which, with which financial resource? Can I go over there and stand? Nobody will let me over there. Mm -hmm. No, because the money is doing everything. The money is talking. If, if anybody has money, he has uh, several cause, several bodyguards, and can do anything they want, like a commander. So... Given this situation, the way forward, you said a uh, reformed constitution. Um, and then provide the condition for an election mm -hmm. after maybe one year, two years, and then recognize the border with Pakistan that stop this uh, exporting of Taliban from Pakistan. And then let the local people guard and defend their villages. Instead of giving this, pouring thousands of uh, or billions of dollars to, to the hand of this corrupt government, give them to local people. That makes to, a lot to, of sense, actually. To, to, to defend their, their yes, villages. Yes. Now we, we have to send them. The British soldiers, where they were um, serving in Hillman, hmm. defending um, Hillman the villages. How long you can continue the, this uh, policy? Hmm. Hmm. That it was effective. Was it effective? No. There was the uh, opium production smaller? No. Surgeons? No. Nothing. So you expect to see a way forward that involves this constitutional reform and, I mean, what else? That's not by itself enough. A proper government mm -hmm. with, with right policies. Mm. It means let the people to elect their leaders 
defend their villages, support them to defend their villages, and also our relation with our neighbors. That is the main thing. The main source of Taliban is in Pakistan. The factory is over mm. there. Yes, of course, of course. So how we can, we, we how long we can uh, um, keep this hostile condition with Pakistan? The Afghans or the Pashtuns are telling that doesn't matter. If, if it takes 100 years, we do not recognize the border. Mm. No, it's impossible. Every day we are pleading. We have to talk to them what they want. If anybody talks to Pakistan, they say they do not rec recognize the border. Mm. They want half of our country. Mm. Indians are over there. They are supporting, they are equipping, uh, arming these anti-Pakistani um, forces in Balochistan. They want to disintegrate us. So you're suggesting the way forward is a reformed government with a new constitution, but um, you're asking the great powers to impose that because that can't Not to impose, they provide this condition. Otherwise, now they, they, are, they, they, are, they are supporting uh, Ghani for what? Supporting Abdullah and Ghani National Unity Government based on what? Mm. Based on what Kareem imposed. Mm. Is, am, I, am I right? Because they, there was nothing legal in Afghanistan. We do not have any NUG, National Unity Government, Unity Government in, in our constitution. It means that we, British and Americans, imposed it. It was John, John Kerry plan, not Afghan's plan, not Afghanistan mm -hmm. plans. So you imposed it. Now you are supporting this to continue. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 15, 15 years is, is not enough. Go ahead. Otherwise, you have to change the policy. What Bush and Obama has done, that was wrong. So the this, policy should be now? This, be, not based on ethnicity, not based on language, not based on the percentages. Right. For, in, in our army, as I told you, in the ministry, now 50% Abdullah, 50%. So what is the. Now, if anybody if, uh, proposes <coughs> Abdullah, anybody, Ghani rejects. If Ghani rejects, uh, proposes anybody, Abdullah rejects. Yes, no, we have several, several ministers. Yes. For yes. a commander, for a governor. How long do you want to continue this game? 50 50? What is it? Mm. Meanwhile, the, the none of them <laughs> believe to democracy. None and you do to... want democracy for Afghanistan. You want a democratic future. Or, or a kind of local democracy based on a lawyer joga, a uh, tribal rule. You know that. The, if you call it Louis Jirga, if you call it uh, a commission of elite uh, people, you know that the term is not uh, import uh, important. What we are deciding, we have to change it. We have mm. to amend it be based on anything that our people like it. At least practically, we should give the power to the people. Lead the power to elite. But power to the people, not through de Western-style democracy, because that's failed in Afghanistan, hasn't it? So with this uh, tribalist... Uh, yeah. People, you can build democracy. 15 years is, is enough, I think. So you'd like to go on with the democratic experiment? So it was, it, it first, because you know that the democracy is not a package that we uh, ex export to any country. Mm. It goes step by step. We should um, provide the infrastructure, the background, step by step. First of all, we have made the constitution and then provide the security condition to at least because no election will be without any fraud, but the percentage is very important. We, we may, my, my, may have a 10% um, fraud, you, might, uh, you may have a 90% fraud. Hmm. There is no, no perfect government, there is no perfect election, there is but no perfect voting. Some advocate um, a kind of strong man coming in or they want to see a strong man coming in as a dictator of Afghanistan. You don't see that. That's not That's a, that is exactly what Pashtun wants from uh, yeah. first from Gaza and, uh, and now from Ghani. They want to him to become a strong dictator and Hikmat Yor joined him for this purpose especially mm. because Ghani was emphasizing on ethnicity and uh, what was missing that was Islam religious because mm. Ghani doesn't know what is Islam. And sometimes, as you heard, he said that uh, Imam Hussain was grandson of uh, God. That is a shame in Afghanistan. Mm. Uh, and now he invited Hikmat Yar to fill this gap. So it means that now he has um, 
religious um, support or background. He has uh, also uh, ethnic support. He will become a dictator like Abdurrahman that killed 60% of Hazara in 100 years ago. And now what is Afghan actually one? This is uh, a Fizulami style type in dictator in um, communist time or Abdurrahman type as because as you know uh, uh, Ghani is a sick person and uh, with this tribalist ideas but they want a dictator but mm. who can prevent it Pakistan will never let him to become a dictator Pakistan will exactly yeah. because this dictator won't have of the Pakistan mm. that is the main reason Mm. India is supporting, in Russian were supporting here, they showed a, a, a dictator to disintegrate Pakistan. And so therefore you're not against the increase in troop numbers from Washington and so on, the foreign fight? For the present, if you don't increase, then uh, the Taliban will, will, will take all the country. Yes, yes, yes. So um, Increasing to provide a good condition for a good governance, for, for uh, the... A better situation, change so of policy. What is the change of constitution you want? You're going to have, let's say, by lawyer Jerga, a constitution changed. Decentralized of government. Yeah. It means we should have a president, yeah, a prime minister, a parliament, elected governors, elected mayors, elected chief of the policies, all these things. Now all these people are appointed from Kabul. Yes. Before by the minister, now by government. Because mm. Ghan is centralized everything in, in his palace. Oh. Everything yeah. is now over there. Even a director of the school will, will be appointed oh. with, uh, without the, with the Ghani order. No government can, uh, can appoint anybody. No minister can appoint anybody. If I have a computer, I will shoot just sit, sit over there. Then, so we want a fair system. And you are asking, effectively, the Americans to come in and to reform Afghanistan. It's not something that's going to happen since you have a corrupt, or Afghanistan has a corrupt government now. It's not going to happen internally with outside, further outside info, interference, is it? It's going to... Exactly. Without, without the U.S. intervene, we cannot do anything. Because now, officially, half belong to Abdullah, half belong to Ghani, and they Mm. Do not recognize officially each other. Yes. Have yes. you heard of the law that he said a few months ago that during these two years I have not seen a, a, a Ghani for two minutes? It mm. means they are not talking to each other. That's sad. Because Pashtuns are, they want to centralize, they want a dictator over there. Mm. They are blaming Americans, the United States, that they imposed a 50% body on us. Now we cannot mm. do anything. Yes. In Ashraf, when also tell you, uh, you know that, he is also telling that I cannot do anything because 50% belong to Abdullah. Mm. I don't have any power. So, so now we are in a, a so we, end. We need, I mean, the writing of a new constitution. We need the Americans to put pressure on Ashraf Ghani to allow a new presidential election? Um, Not president. Before, before uh, amendment of constitution, then we are going on the same way. So we have Ashraf Ghani, we will have another Ashraf Ghani. Mm. We will have the same, 100 percent the same. Mm. If not, 90 percent the same because everything is in Hassan. Police is uh, his appointee, governor is his appointee. Uh, all the election committee is his appointee. Mm. Then he, instead of um, uh, four million, uh, ten million will <laughs> vote for him. Yes, yes. So, so what, what kind of uh, kind of election? And do you see? I mean, you you have a hope that uh, President, well, Trump now can uh, could have the will to do this if we. If, we, if he has the right information, I hope, mm. then there is a hope that uh, he changes the previous policy of Obama in Bush administration. Mm. Mm. Look what Bush has done before finishing the Afghanistan, he went to Iraq yeah. in Obama. Before finishing, he withdrew all the soldiers. Just now 10,000 is over there. 
afraid. Pressing. So what was your mission? What did you want to mm. do in Afghanistan? Mm. Eliminate Al-Qaeda just? What about Taliban? Who invited uh, Al-Qaeda to Afghanistan? Taliban. Mm. Mm. So our dream must be a uh, renewed Western interference um, through pressure on President Ashraf Ghani to enable uh, reform, reform which brings in a new constitution which involves more devolution of power to the governorates and uh, the provinces, I mean. Exactly. Um, and that is essentially the key. Is it more devolution of power to the provinces will slowly but surely bring a more stable Afghanistan, in your view? Exactly. Otherwise, how we can um, um, defend our villages? Hmm. Interesting. Who, who, the Americans should go to our villages, or British soldiers, again, mm. you want to send them to Helmand province? Mm. With more money, with, with more um, lives, spend more lives, more, more, no. uh, more money, no. yeah. and continue the same circle? Mm. And secondly, we have to recognize the borderline, the Duran line with Pakistan. Normalize our relation with Pakistan. We have to ask Pakistan. Mm, mm. We should help Pakistan. Mm. Why you are, if you are not supporting, why they are here? Mm. If you are supporting, why? That's they have the right to say the first change. You are puppets over there. You are puppets are telling that they, even they don't have the money. Yes. In, in in their pockets, but claiming that half of our soil belong to them. Change the, 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 your puppets. Replace them. Yes. If you are the yes. Yes. If you yeah. have those puppets, we will send yeah. all these talibs. Now, of course, we need honest governors, don't we? I mean, the part of the problem is that the governors often seem to buy their position. And, and, and then all these positions are buying and selling. Mm. If you want to become a governor, how much you have to pay? If you want to become a chief of police, if you go to custom, it, you have to pay. Or you have to relation mm. to a high position again. The money is... Everything. And then the irony is that then if you've bought your governorship, then you have to be corrupt yourself in order to pay the, for the... If cost. I give for uh, 100,000 US dollars for you to become governor, then you have to collect all those things from here. If I, because I know that I will be here for a, a year or two years. Mm. Then I have to <laughs> compensate what I have given to you. That is exactly the case in Afghanistan. Especially when there's more money coming from outside, yes, and they are not accountable to anything, because now they, they want with the name of schools, with the name of reconstruction, with the name of oh. uh, army, with the name of um, local militia, with the name of so many things over, over there. These contracts, you know what what they are doing over there. For example, if you want to build a a, a, a road between Kabul and Kandahar, for example, the actual price is uh, fifty million dollar. Oh. If I have a uh, contact, then I will take this contract from you, $50 million. Since I'm not doing anything, I will sell it to Ali for $40 million. Mm. Then Ali will sell it to Ahmad for another $30 million. Mm. And that he will send it, sell it to another person for 20, and that poor person should build this highway with $20 million. This is the way that the things are going on now in Well, let's hope, therefore, Professor, that we will see this kind of uh, new wisdom from Donald Trump and that we will see a better future. I do hope That's so. the only hope. The only hope is now Donald Trump with the right policies. Otherwise, we will continue with the same issue circle. Well, thank you for telling us that. And thank you so much for being our guest on ANN. It's been a real privilege to talk to you. It's very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bless you. Good. So here we are, and what a situation. It's reminiscent of so many catastrophes in the world today. Wherever the, the West meddles, we seem to make things worse. Look at Libya, look at Syria, look at, look at uh, 
well, everything, Palestine, Israel, uh, Iraq, and now Afghanistan. Um, we're not very good meddlers. And at the end of the day, uh, the, the crisis in Afghanistan, it's sad that because, because the professor is saying, we look to the West to cure the mess they've made. It's a shame that it can't be. It's a shame that it can't be Afghanistan that cures its own problems, but, but perhaps it can't. Perhaps Donald Trump does have to take some responsibility for what has gone before. I mean, it's not as if the West had any choice about intervention post 9-11. Post uh, that, that was inevitable, but, um, but the way we handled things was clumsy, was bad, was inappropriate. And trying to put in puppet rulers has been bad and inappropriate. And it is true that we do need reformed governance in Afghanistan that devolves power down to the regions. There's no question about it. Every, every commentator on the scene that knows anything about Afghanistan has said this from the beginning. But the irony is that those deciding the policy know nothing about Afghanistan and have promoted centralized puppet rule. Um, let's hope that there is better wisdom and that there is the kind of new future that the professor would like to see and that we do get better devolved power and devolved governance in a new Afghanistan with a new constitution. It's that or turn our backs and sigh. Thank you very much indeed for being with us and being our guests on ANN Television.